All right, y'all. Five questions about your purpose. We'll try to go through all five of them, but we're going to take our time. If you got any questions you can ask, it's okay. And remember, the only stupid question is one you don't ask. That's right. Well, coming out of my mouth. Are you going to let us answer before before we read your answer? Except for y'all. Okay. Well, I can, y'all, I'll tell you what, then. There you go. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm going to ask this question, then here's what we'll do. I'll ask the question, because remember, just because I got it typed in here doesn't mean that it's 100% right. That this this is this is my opinion, and the opinion of some other scholars. Okay, but again, you can take it and twist it around and make it, and, and it doesn't have to be yes or no. It can be a combo question. So so don't think this is the only answer. This is just a guide. Okay, it's like if you ask if you ask my grandma how many ways can you cook fried chicken, she says ample one way. That's her way. <laughs> right. But you know, there's plenty of ways to cook fried chicken. Okay, so so. Again, when you see these questions and answers, this is just this is a spiritual logical answer. Spiritual logical answer does not mean this is the holy writ. Okay. So, number one, and after I ask this question, then we can talk, and then I'll, then I'll read this other. All right. Do I have only one purpose in life? Somebody yeah. answer. That's a great answer. No. No. I'm gonna explain some of that too in a minute. Why? Why did you say we only we have more than one purpose in our life? Because things change. What else? Things and other things change around us, and our interests change, and sometimes even um, circumstances make us change our purpose That's because we will see some need and think maybe I should try this. Yes. Oh yeah. Say, I kept an EMT license for 17 years because at the time Blunt's Creek had no rescue squad and it's like they were just starting up in the area. But I did not think that was my my purpose in life. Same with me. <laughs> After doing that 17 years. I did it for <laughs> a long time. time too, yeah. <laughs> uh, and your per your even if you think you only have one purpose, there can be many facets to that purpose. Yeah, it's like this. Hold your hand up. I think we did this one night before. We did, I think, the first night. All right. I want you to think about your own life and think about categories in your own life. You are a child of somebody, so you got parents. Mm -hmm. Right now, I had no idea that we were going to Slatestone and that we were taking care of Linda's parents. Okay? That's what comes full circle. That's right. Parents. Children, I had no idea that we'd be, last night Lynn and I were talking about, we had no idea, <laughs> blown away, that Bethany, 26, year old, 26 years old, has cancer, and we don't know how far it's spread in her body, but we know that it's more, it's metastasized, we know that already, so it's stage four, and so we don't know what's going on, so, all right, parents, change, just a few years ago, they were ministering to us. We were going around there, they were cooking lunch for us, we were going around hiding Easter eggs for kids and stuff, and now, cooking for them, taking care of medicine, you know, all that. Number two, children, uh, uh, just like in Benny's situation this weekend with Barbara, she had no idea that she had to go comfort her daughter, whose daughter was in the hospital dying, okay? Again, purposes change, right? Bethany had no idea purposes change, all right? As a husband or a wife, there may be something wrong with your wife uh, uh, or your husband. I watched you take care of Frankie. I watched some of y'all take care of situations like that. You know, uh, and y'all, and most of you have taken care of each other. But you know, I'm just saying, as you see, and you were going to say something. Go ahead and say something. No, I'm good. Today's actually his birthday. Oh. Uh, Yes, very that, much emotional. That's all I want to say. <laughs> you know, Go ahead. The, the, my mother died on December 16th, buried on the 20th. My wife died on December 20th, buried on the 23rd. And my mother's birthday is April 22nd. My wife's birthday is, is January 10th, or July 10th. And without even thinking about it, it on those days, you. on those days, I'll have some of the weirdest days, and I'll be, I'll be grumpy or emotional, and I have something to say, why am I so emotional today? Why am I so grumpy? And then I realized it's the day my mama died or buried or the day my wife died or was buried or their birthdays. 
You know, those, those days right there, those six days are just always, without me even thinking about it, because you've been around them so long, it's ingrained in you, you know. I was going to say, and, and, you, and you're right, you think about it, even when you don't think about that. Um, Frankie's father drowned at a young age, and it's like when he hit that age, he, the whole year was just a bad year for him. I mean, mm -hmm. he just kept thinking about the fact that, you know, this is the age his father died. But, um, and I think you do carry those dates yes. and things with you. Yes, yes. Okay, so, so there's, you're a child, you got parents, you're a parent and or have people like children to you. Sometimes it's nieces and nephews, sometimes it's just a neighbor. Okay, all right. And then uh, uh, your spouse, then at work, you got your boss, you got your work, you got your co-workers, then you got your circle, then you got your friends, you got your church friends and family. You just got your own, your own little things that you're going through. Look at all this right there. Just us just throwing, just this quickly throwing it out there. There's more. I just called out eight things just like that. So those what you would call simultaneous purposes. Yes, that's right. That's, and they're all purposes in your life. Because if you've got a spouse, believe it or not, you got a spouse, God has something to do with you and that spouse. Okay, he puts y'all together. You got to believe. If you don't believe it, if you don't believe that, then you're sunk. I believe it. Seriously, if you don't believe that God, God just if God picked your children, and here's here's how I can prove that. Watch this. Here's how I can prove it. Do you, do we only have one purpose life? Purpose life? No. You have several purposes dealing on the different major major roles you feel in life. Here it goes. Growing in Christ-like character. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. Now, now, I can prove that God, God picked your wife or your husband. Watch this. And your kids. Watch. For God, for those God foreknew, somebody thinks, well, God, some people teach the doctrine of predestination is God's already decided who's going to heaven and hell, and you can't change it. That is not the, that is not the doctrine of predestination. That's Calvinistic doctrine. It is not the doctrine of predestination. That takes all the free will away. The doctrine of predestination is Jesus died in order that any man or woman can go to heaven. So we're all predestined to go to heaven, but the choice is ours. Okay? The way's already made. We're all predestined to go. But, watch this. But, for those he foreknew, in other words, he knew you before you were born. No, he didn't know you before you were born. He knew your purpose. And he even knew if you were going to make it to heaven or not already. And he puts up road signs and roadblocks along the way, but still he knows you're not going to listen. But it says, for those he foreknew, those that he already already knew this, remember, and this is this is uh, not those that he already decided who was going to heaven and hell, but those he knew. He also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. And the way we're predestined to be, in, I mean, the way we're Conform to the likeness of the Son is to go through sorrow and pain and, stuff, and that thing, those, and hardship. That's why I say, He knew who your wife was going to be. Okay, David. <laughs> and, your, and your husband. And your husband. I, was thinking about, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> I just thought that was a funny one to throw out there. You didn't think we were going to catch So, but still. <laughs> <laughs> he predestined to be conformed. In other words, it's his will. It's his will for you not to have have a slick road. You cannot climb a slick mountain. It's impossible to climb a slick mountain. Yeah. You've got to have obstacles to hold on to. You've got to have obstacles to propel you. So these obstacles you're thinking is causing you to <laughs> it's, it's slowing you down is actually causing you to get a grip. And without those obstacles, you wouldn't get a grip. Wow. Well, what Think about, about it. What about the people that can get up that mountain and they don't even have to slide? They go, and but you, up but, there. But, you, but, but you don't really see the preparation that might have been beforehand or what's coming later I'm on. I'm watching too much television. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm watching too many Dad, people that are getting up there and you don't. They got ropes and everything else to help them along. Oh, I don't think so. I Look, think it seems that way. got a rocket in their rear end. Yeah, some of them got a rocket, rocket crammed up their hind parts. Well, watch this. You better be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went to the doctor today, and the doctor 
Linda said, you make sure he checks you good on every spot you've got. And, man, it's gonna be and so he's there and said, now take off all your clothes. I said, come on, Doc. He said, well, I can't check all your spots without it. <laughs> and he even, I mean, he even. Was that he, a dermatologist? No, it was Dr. Young. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. And he was. He didn't give you no flowers, did he? No, he didn't give me any flowers, but, 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 but he did. He did. He did go. <laughs> he, said, he said, tell your wife that I checked your butt. He said, I've checked you from your head to your butt. You're all right. Yeah, this is going on YouTube. I know. Um, okay, watch this. Too late now. Well, no, if he, it, he didn't check properly if he checked the head. No, he, went, he, went, he actually checked all the way down. So he didn't want a second opinion. Uh, well, I, well, I had to have a knee operation one time before, and when they told me I had to have a knee operation, no I said I wanted a second opinion. He said, well, you're ugly, too. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> okay, here you go. This is this. Watch this. For, this. for the question you just asked, this is perfect. I want you to... I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm really talking, David, about people that don't believe in a God and they don't have religious beliefs and they just fly right up there at the top of the mountain without any problems. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, watch this. Look yeah, at this. We're just struggling to get up there. Alright, yeah, watch this. I'm going to read I'm going to read it. Psalm 7, it's 1 Psalm 37. It says, Do not fret because of evil doers or those that don't believe. Do not be envious of the wicked or the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust the Lord to do good. Dwell in the land of freedom and his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and also he'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and justice. Rest in the Lord right patiently on him. For the, and I hear it says, And cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. For they that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Now, Psalm 73, right? Okay, that was the entire Psalms 37? Yes, ma'am. Okay. In Psalm 73, truly, okay, truly God is good to Israel, to such as our pure heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My, my steps were nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. There are no pains in their death. But their strength is firm. They're not in trouble as other men. They're not plagued like other men. Therefore, pride surfaces as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lofty. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongues walk thee through the earth. Therefore, his people return here and what and... and or, the waters of a full cup are drained by them, and they say, How does God know, and is there knowledge of the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in, in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. For I have said I will speak thus. Behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. Surely you have slipped, set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how you brought desolation in a moment. See, in a moment. It's coming. It's all coming. Okay? It's like this. My daddy used to tell me this when I was coming up, and there was some things hard I had to learn, or things I was having to go through. Daddy would say, do you want to pay now and play later? Or do you want to play now and pay later? And he said, because if you pay now, your play is going to be a whole lot freer and longer. But if you play now, your pay is going to be a whole lot longer and harder. Okay? So, so now, when I go through things, I'm thinking, I'm paying now, but I'm going to play later. Think of what Daddy told me. I'm going to play later. All right? And, and some of these people, they're playing now. But you watch. I've watched them. I've, I've watched them. There's guys I used to be so envious of and jealous of and even mad at and say, God, did you see what they've done? Why are you letting this happen to them? Why is all this going on? And then later on, what happens? I said, man, you know, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. 
But he did say, Surely you set them slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors, and as a dream of one awakes, so, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and not towards receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none on the earth that I desire besides you. My heart, my flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, they who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those that desert you for harlotry. But it was good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all your works. I've watched a many a person make fun of other Christians or make fun of Christians and make fun of how they were living until they wound up in the slippery spot. And when they're in that slippery spot, all of a sudden now, you know, there was people at work at Procter and Gamble when I first first started serving the Lord, <clears throat> and they saw I was serious. Uh, and then when I started ministering, they would get in they would get in front of their friends, and they had nicknames for me that were vulgar, and they would call me Reverend and these vulgar names, and they would talk junk. But when I was by myself somewhere walking around the warehouse or something, they'd come to me and go, "Can you can I, can I talk to you for a minute?" And I go, "What's wrong?" And they go, "I'm having family problems. Well, my wife, I think, is going to leave me, or or my kids." You know, they're strung out on drugs. What do I do? But in front of everybody else, when they got by herself, you know, <clears throat> it was a whole different story. <clears throat> right here it says, being the best we can be. Just know this, no matter how rough the mountain looks. Because remember, those guys you may think are having it made. But <clears throat> I've watched. I've watched the people that were making $200,000 a year found them. In one day, in one moment, in one moment of anger, they do something stupid. And I see Mr. Fountain fire them. Mm. Just like that. Mm. And everybody thought they were untouchable. And nobody would fire them. And I watched Mr. Fountain say, uh, you need to leave now. That's going on in Congress. Right yeah. In the minute. No, yeah. Bunches of them. <laughs> yeah. That's right. They need to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So but here's, our, here's our responsibility. Be the best we can be, which in turn glorifies God. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for me. In Colossians 3.23. You know the Bible says your mouth is like a sword that can get you in more trouble. Yeah. In two seconds you can get out of them in your whole life. You can. It can take you... It can take you a lifetime to win respect from somebody and take 30 seconds or less for you to lose it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So, any more questions? Does God have more than one purpose? Y'all have already, already answered the rest of these questions with your first question. Y'all already answered the rest of them. So, yeah. So, ain't that cool? Y'all didn't, didn't know y'all were that smart, did you? <laughs> then we did. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. We're okay. testing you. <laughs> okay. We've done the purposes of change, and we've done the purposes and goals, God's highest purpose for my life. Yeah, you've already gone on down all this. See, you've already done it. Let's go down them anyway. Okay, my purpose change. You've already said it. Yes. Yes, some purposes will change depending on the major changes in your life. For example, here's just some examples. A former student now has a wife and children. Therefore, while some of the purposes he has had as a student still remain, others will no longer be applicable. Now his major life purposes will be, uh, number one, continuing to grow in Christ-like character. John 13, 15, I'll set an example that you should do as I have done for you. Number two uh, uh, is to sacrificially love his wife as Christ loved the church. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Number three, Teaching his children through his actions. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them while you sit at home and while you walk around along the road and while you lie down and, and when you get up. Deuteronomy 6, 5, and 7. And just like <clears throat> I, I didn't think D.C. and Daniel were listening until actually until they, until they got around other people. And people say what they had said, and now as they're adults, I see it, 
and I see some of the stuff they do, and I'm thinking, and and, uh, and and like Bethany, there's times I thought she was no more paying attention in church than a man on the moon. And now since she's been going through this, she's part up all this stuff. She's going to town. I'm I'm getting through this town with a ten word prayer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know. And then she just keeps popping all this stuff up, and I'm going, wow, Bethany, I didn't think you were listening. She said, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get. <laughs> <clears throat> and then the other day, DC, DC said, DC said, I said, stage three or stage four. And DC said, that's not good. He said, but God is. God's got this. And then he said, <clears throat> he said, and she's a fighter. And I said, yes, she is. And she said, she, he learned from the best, or she learned from the best. And I thought, oh, maybe she must have watched her brothers fighting each other. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, how else can, so think about that. How, how has your life changed? I, I can remember going to work, and just, just something like going to work at Fountain. I went to work at Fountain, and I actually, I, I actually at the time said, uh, well, you know, uh, Whatever you'd like for me to do, I'll do. And they said, well, they, and of course I have a resume with me. And uh, <clears throat> they said, well, we, we need you an electrical and or engineer. And I said, well, whatever you want, I'll do it. You just tell me. And then they got looking at the resume and said, well, we don't want you an engineer. With electrical, we want you an engineer. And I said, well, it's up to y'all. And so then they sent me the service and warranty. No, electrical. They sent me the service and warranty because of electrical. And, and the man service and warranty, the resume and said, bud, you, no, 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 you go to engineering. So I go to engineering, and I get hired that day by the vice president of engineering. And, and so I started out in one capacity within a few months. I was in charge of several engineers, and by the time the year was up, I was in charge of a whole department. But that was not because of me. That was because God put me where he needed me so I could minister to people. And I was ministering to people all over that plant. And I know that. I know that's what was going on. I, I, and then Mr. Fountain introduced me to those big bike presidents as... He's our industrial engineer manager, but he's also our pastor, the company pastor. He would tell all these guys this. You know, he tells superstars this, too. This is our, our company pastor. You know, <clears throat> of course, it would make people stop talking. Some guys would stop talking. <laughs> yeah, watch what you say. Yeah. <clears throat> and I go, fellas, it's okay. I'm all right. I'm not going <clears> to. <throat> you're not offending me. You're talking, you might offend my boss, but you're not offending me. And my favorite thing was they go, I leave the door open and I come in and go, were you born in a, were you born in a bar? And I go, no, but my boss was. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same thing. thing is true with your children, too. Yeah. I mean, if you sit down and talk to them like you're talking uh, in the way that you're described right now, it sticks with them. With my children, I, George can tell you about this. At the supper table one night, two of my boys came in. They had the earring going. They were just young, 13, 14 years old. And, uh, guys, I gave those guys a talking to about earrings, nose rings, and tattoos. And I guess it stuck because never one of my children ever had a tattoo or a nose ring or anything like that. So yes, yeah. you don't think that they're listening, but they do. It's back there echoing all the time. Oh, it echoes all the time. Yeah, yeah it does. I told my boys, if they got an earring, I was yeah. going to take it out. Like, well, that's that's right. Right. That's right. Snake bite. Snake bite. Snake bite. Well, I got, you know, got in your bite in a fight a long time ago. Boy come in there and had a hog ring in his nose. I said, what have you been doing, rooting? And they put a ring in your nose and he quit. I'm telling you right now. He wanted to. <laughs> well, I just told Daniel he looked sweet. <laughs> I said, you look so sweet. I just went that kid. Did he have you? <laughs> he did for a little while. He said, he, I said, you look so sweet, Daniel. I just went that kid. <laughs> and Daniel went. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you another thing that goes right along with them youngest mine. A couple of them came back at, when they reached close to being 20 years old. And they wanted me to tell them me to tell them just one more time about whatever the subject was. <clears throat> yeah. Make sure I didn't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. DC and Danny come right now and they'll tell Bethany. So Bethany goes, Daddy's so hard on me. And they go, y'all, you a girl. <laughs> yeah. 
That you're a girl. Dad, Dad treats you with a little kid gloves. He said he, he had wire gloves with us. He used wire brushes with us. He's a barbed wire. Yeah, barbed wire. Yeah. Barbed wire. <clears throat> I go, nah, y'all guys make it like I drug you out behind the car. And I said I never did that, but once or twice. <laughs> okay. So, so you know, and then let me just let me just tell you something. But we're gonna talk about Hitler and Paul. Let me just throw something out here because uh, it, again, it's things that's hard to believe. You know that Hitler, Hitler's uh, catastrophic crusade against the Jews was to annihilate every man, every woman, and every child, the Jews. And his efforts were applauded by Germans and by even the men of the cloth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, he brainwashed them all. Mm -hmm. that he, he just had them thinking he was doing good. In 1934, a Catholic priest described Hitler, listen, Remember, in 1938, he was, he was Time Magazine's Man of the Year. In 1934, a Catholic priest described Hitler as the tool of God, called upon to overcome Judaism. <clears throat> the praise of yet another German religious leader elevated Hitler to another otherworldly scale. He said, and he was almost true, Christ has come to us through the person of Adolf Hitler. But it was the Antichrist. Yeah. <clears throat> So, uh, again, we got to think about our own purposes in our life, and, 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 and are, are, we, are we trying to be like Christ? Hitler, they were saying he was, but he wasn't. He was being far from Christ. When did they finally realize that that's what he really is? Well, some didn't realize until they went to the concentration camps. That's when they found the Jews that. honestly thought that he was. <clears throat> he told the Jews that he was giving them a better life, and they carried their suitcases with them. And he carried him to the concentration camps. And he told them he was giving them a better life. And he was keeping them calm. And then when he got there, he told them, I'm putting you in showers. And I'm just going to go ahead and deodorize you and clean you. Or desecticize and all that. <clears throat> so he would take them to the showers. And there was up to 5,000 Jews exterminated a day. <clears throat> yeah. And, that, and it was that, he would tell them they were going to a better life. They were going to a shower. You know, and instead they were gassed. And what it did, a doctor was set out off the train, and he would look at the guys and the gals, and they come off. And if he did, if he did like this, you went to the showers. If he did like this, you went to the, to the camp, and you worked for a while. So whichever way you went, decided whether you were going to be killed that day, or where you were going to be used. Was to do yeah, that. yeah, right. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> well, Adolf Hitler sought Jews for death, the death for Jews. Paul sought to bring life. There's the difference. That's how you watch now. If somebody's telling you they're for God, and they're trying to do for God, but everything they do has a smell of death, leave them alone. Okay, that's a, that's a sure sign. Uh, he, his was a labor of love. Now, Paul thought he was doing God a favor before he got saved, and he was killing Jews. The difference is Adolf Hitler never changed. Paul did. And so Paul, Paul thought he was doing What was he? He was, he was in the Sanhedrin. He was their hitman. Yeah. And Paul, being the hitman for the Jews, <clears throat> for religious people, Paul went into houses and drug Christians out, had mock trials, and had them drugged to their death. Because of him, some were, some were killed right there on the spot. Others were put in the arena and were put between chariots and pulled apart. Others fought lions. And were killed by lions and tigers. Others were just uh, exterminated. So Paul was doing that too. Paul was Long bad. before Hitler. Yes. Yeah, Paul was doing it too. But the difference is, and Paul thought he was doing God a favor. <clears throat> getting rid of the Jews. But, or getting rid of the Christians. How could he think that? that? I don't understand. Because religion had him brainwashed. Mm -hmm. Religion will brainwash him. Religion had him brainwashed. And so Paul thought he was doing God a favor. And when he talks about that thorn in the flesh in Corinthians, uh, <clears throat> that thorn in the flesh, many think, I, and I see several things that were going on in his life. Number one, the thorn in the flesh was he was always in prison. It's like every time he turned around, he was in prison. Okay, he spent, he wrote most of the, he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, and he wrote over half of the two-thirds of the New Testament from prison. So, Part of it, he was always being locked up, so that meant that he was in bad shape. Physical health was really bad. He also had malaria. This is history telling us he had malaria. 
and he had been stoned and left for dead, so he, he probably had some type of palsy, because they said, here's what they said, Paul was a short man, had one eyebrow, this is the history, not me, because he had palsy from being stoned, he did like this, look, this is how he walked. So here's the apostle, the mighty apostle Paul that was killing all those Jews. And now he's doing like this. When he comes and spittle went out of his mouth. Now, can you imagine that very powerful man everybody was scared of? Now when he walks, he drags his leg, his arms hung. He's got a palsy. And he has malaria. He's so sick that Luke travels with him. When you see the book of Acts, you see him talking about us. It's not just Paul and Silas. When he says to us, it's Paul, Silas, and Luke. And didn't he also get bit by a poisonous snake? He got bit by a poisonous snake. Shook it off. So Paul, Paul carried his own physician with him. Luke was a physician. So Luke was his personal physician. He carried him everywhere he went. And that's why Luke, uh, Luke, could, Luke was just, was just awesome. Okay? Luke is just absolutely awesome. Man. Luke was a historian. So, so Luke was his personal physician. But, and in the book of Acts... It's, I'll talk about what Paul did, but it's not just Paul and Silas, it's Paul and Silas and Luke. Okay? Now, Paul also, because of his being in prison so much, his eyesight was very bad. And in the book of Galatians, he says, y'all love me so much that you would even pluck out your own eyes and give them to me. And he says, look at how large a letter I write with my own hand. Meaning that he couldn't see, so he had to... Okay? So, this thorn in the flesh, some think this thorn in the flesh was, of course, the, the palsy from the stonings and the malaria and all the other things that he'd gone through like that. Some think that it could have been his sight. But I think personally, my own personal opinion is it could be any one of those, but my own personal opinion is he carried to his dying day the thought of all those Christians that he killed. Yeah. That's right. But he was ready. Yes. Which Hitler did. Right. So, Paul caused a lot of death. And caused a lot of families to be broke up. People lose their jobs. Homes to be destroyed. He was just he was just a bad, bad man. And when he got saved, when he got saved, Jesus' disciples would have nothing to do with him. They were scared of him. So God had to call Barnabas to come along and work with him. Because everybody was scared to death of him. And when Ananias, after he got blinded on the road to Damascus, and Kay told Ananias, he said, I want you to go pray for Paul. And he went, huh? <laughs> Paul? <laughs> so when did he struggle with all the afflictions that he had? That's just along the way through all of his missionary journeys. Right. So he, he started, there's actually three books of, of the Corinthians, but they've lost one of them. So obviously we didn't need it. If we didn't need it, it wouldn't have gotten lost. There's three books of the Corinthians. Uh... There's other books. There's other books in the New Testament that we no longer have. Again, if we needed them, we'd have them. But Paul started all these churches. All these churches. Paul started them, and Paul would go around and check on them. And he'd stay with them for a while, and go to another one, another one, come back and check on them. And <clears throat> these books of the Bible are actually uh, the New Testament are books written to that church. So did he just start? But the problem started getting worse for him. And Oh yeah, oh yeah, all the way down. All the way down. Yeah, he was he was in he he wasn't an old man when he died. I mean, uh, John was ninety to one hundred years old when he died, but Paul was probably in his early sixties, and Paul was beheaded. Peter died on the cross upside down. Some of them, I think, uh, uh, Thomas, I think, was running through with a spear, and in India, and. Uh, you just go on and on and on how these guys, all these guys died. Uh, and, of course, uh, uh, James got his head cut off with a sword. Okay, he probably was, he out of all the guys, him and, him and Paul probably had the easiest deaths. Getting their heads cut off. Because the rest of them, terrible, painful, painful. So one, one of them had his skin peeled off. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was, but he had his skin actually peeled off inch by inch. Mm. Yeah, and so, so you're living while you're getting your skin peeled off. That's that's just terrible. But the apostles, they were driving people crazy. They didn't want to hear it. You know, Paul didn't want to hear it. <clears throat> but on the road to Damascus, Paul said, "Who are you, Lord?" And he said, "I'm Jesus, the one you persecuted." And uh, persecuted. 
per, per, you're persecuting meaning you think you're getting these Christians and getting them out of the way, but you're not you're you're not just hurting them, you're hurting me. I'm the one you're persecuting. And he said it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. And that word pricks is goads. How many's ever taken a, a hot shocker? So use the hot shocker. Or even just or my grandmama would take sticks with little sharp points on them to get hogs. Hot them hogs. And sometimes the the if you look on the ox cart, the goat on the ox cart will be out there behind the, the ox and the driver would take that goad and he would hit the ox right behind the hoof up into the soft part of the meat behind the hoof which is tender and he would make them do what he wanted them to do <laughs> and that's what Paul was talking about but Jesus says it's hard for you to kick against those goads I'm trying to tell you you're going the wrong way I'm trying to tell you you're doing it wrong but you won't listen so now I'm going to have to knock you down and blind you <laughs> so that, that's some powerful stuff kind of like what he does with us but it's not that violent well, sometimes it is. Yeah, sometimes. And sometimes it very much is. Uh, and what's sad is, is after you've gone through it, and then you've got a loved one going through it, and you're just having to suffer through it with them. You know, and sometimes you don't even realize that's what God's doing, that he's goading them. So, so again, here we go. Uh, uh, your purpose, but which is, I tell you what we'll do. That, that's just, that, that's just, because it is, it's 8 o'clock. I tell you what we'll do. We will, uh, Stop on the next question because that's where we're already answered anyway. We'll finish it up next week on the next question. Um, okay, we'll stop it right here. Okay, it's part one, and we'll do part two next week. The other ones that we haven't touched on already. Okay, <clears throat> now Paul, once God stopped him and he realized, <laughs> I kind of think about you know how the Grinch stole Christmas. The Bible says it's a Grinch. The Grinch, when he saw that the people were still having Christmas without all their stuff, that his heart grew, what, three sizes that day, or whatever it was, six sizes, whatever it was. Well, Paul, after on the road to Damascus, he saw what he had done. You know, so now Paul's trying to tell everybody, I, I, I've changed. And people are going, yeah, right. You are the meanest, baddest cat a religion's ever had. <clears throat> you've, killed, you've killed more men than anthrax, and you're going to try to tell us that you've changed. No. So Barnabas, Barnabas, and then what was so bad was when Mark messed up, Paul was holding against Mark. Again. Mark is just a bad boy. Mark didn't, he didn't pay attention. He went against us and went against everything. And guess who stood up for Mark? Barnabas. Barnabas was always standing up for the underdog. <clears throat> and Stephen, he got stunned with it. Yes, he did. He got stuck. All right, so number three. Our purposes... <clears throat> here's a good question. Are purposes and goals the same? No. Y'all want, want to clarify? I mean, I got it right here, but y'all can clarify it. You read this first, and y'all can say uh, your explanation, and you want to say yours first. Either way is fine with me. Read it first. Okay. Purposes are different from goals. However, they are related. Your purpose answers the question, why am I here? The goals answer, what am I to do here on earth? Okay? There's a difference. Right? <clears throat> my purpose, it might be, yes, to minister. But how am I supposed to minister? There's ministers that are on battlefields. If you go, if you go to Arlington National Cemetery, they have a whole section of, of uh, priests and chaplains that were killed in battle. Mm -hmm. There's guys on the battlefield. There's, there's a, we, all of us are on the spiritual battlefield, but there's some of us on the physical battlefield. Uh, there's some preachers that never step behind a pulpit, but they, they talk from their business. They talk from wherever they minister. Others are ministering in hospitals as chaplains, full-time chaplains. There's others that, like me, uh, or like, like Benny, uh, we go to the we go to uh, pit detention center. I go to hospitals. You know, uh, we go all over the place. He goes to search and rescue. When he's doing search and rescue, that's not. When he's doing search and rescue, you got to understand something. That's not just a purpose. That's a calling, and that's a mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like the other night when he said, "I was I was ready to quit. I thought I got I got lost and ready to quit." And he said, "I said, God, you got to help me." And God got him out. You know why? It's like, I, it's like when Daniel became a deputy, I was really upset until I realized 
that that was his calling, that he was a minister. And Romans 13 says he was a minister of God, a minister of vengeance. And so I said, okay, there you go. And I was in, in Puerto Rico, and I walked behind Walgreens, and there was a guy, I bet he was nine foot tall. And he sat back there, and he could speak English. It was a little broken, but he could speak English. And he was looking very discouraged. I could see it, how discouraged he was. And uh, <clears throat> I said something like, uh, it's not easy wearing that uniform, is it? Toting that badge and that gun. He went, uh -uh. He said, we get misunderstood a lot. It's a big burden. And I said, uh, well, you know that, that God has a purpose for this. He said, excuse me. I said, you're his minister. And he said, how am I his minister? I said, Romans 12 says, do not return evil for evil, but good for evil, because I have my ministers. They're going to take care of it. And that's why you pay taxes. That's why we have the army and the, and the police, because they are my ministers of vengeance. They will repay. If you're doing good, you don't have to fear them. I'm not fearing you now. You're a lot bigger than me, but I don't fear you because I haven't done anything wrong. I don't reckon I've not broken any Puerto Rican laws. <laughs> and, and, and he kind of chuckled, and I said, yeah. I said, but if anybody is in trouble, they better fear you. He goes, oh, yeah. I said, but you're God's minister. So I said, now, if you're God's minister, don't you think while you're here right now and you're being so burdened down, if you're God's minister, don't you think that God wants to bring peace to his minister. And he just went like, whoa. And I said, because you're God's minister, don't you think God's anointing is here for you and God's rest and God's peace? And he went, I didn't think about it that way. I said, yeah. I said, God's got his hand all over you, bro. I said, you don't have to be down. God's got this. And he went, yeah. <laughs> and I ran into him at an outdoor restaurant uh, next day, he was getting something that those restaurants were all outdoors. All that, and there he was, and I was actually paying attention to, to the the birds that were flying in on top of the on top of the tables of the open air restaurant, and they were playing that that Caribbean music, and the birds were dancing. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got there was dancing with the birds. <laughs> and there was that big old policeman. I walked over to him, and he said, "He said, man, he said, thank you for another day." He said, that blessed me. And I said, well, dude, you're a blessing to a lot of people. You know, because you're God's minister. So, again, we're all ministers, but we fulfill it in different ways. That yeah. good shoot. They even knows how to get in there. But you're right, David. It's always been in the, in the back of my mind, in the front of my mind, <clears throat> in certain circumstances that we are all ministers. All of us. Sometimes... I have spoken the same way you described here about God to, to people. And I get funny looks, you know, and everything. But I don't get any arguments either. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I've seen I've seen big old burly policemen ask to tear up when I tell them that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <clears throat> what do I do? What am I to do here? The relationship between the two of the, or that the goals that you set should work together. Your goals should work together with your purpose to help you reach your purpose. If your goal, if your purpose, you know, is to minister, and your goal is to be a hospital chaplain, I can tell you right now, if you plan on being a paid chaplain, you're going to have to have a master's degree, okay? And you're going to have to have a couple of years of training right. on top of that. So if you're going to be a, a search and rescue chaplain, minister in search and rescue, he's got, you probably got, if you, if you had search and rescue credentials, <laughs> you'd be a doctor. Yeah. Doctor Benny. Doing it long That's what I'm saying, Doctor Benny. Yeah. I told Linda yesterday, I walked in and I said, that man's got more degrees. I said, he has to have two or three people walking behind him to carry his degrees. The, the doctor was working on Bethany. I looked, at, I looked at Linda, I said, that guy's had to have gone to school 20 years. I said, but you know what? If I went to school 20 years, I, you'd have to, I want you to call me Doctor Honey. <laughs> I want my kids to call me Doctor Daddy. I <laughs> said, if I had 20 years <laughs> and all those degrees like that, and she said, you know, I think I want to be called Doctor Honey too. I said, yeah, wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> <laughs> so again, think about it. it. It's awesome. It's an awesome thought. Is just make sure if you know what God, if you know that God's pointing you in a direction to minister to somebody, 
then it will do a whole lot of good to try to learn more about that situation so that you can minister in that situation versus being a hindrance. It's kind of like if a rescue squad. Do you know that that's a ministry? That's a strong ministry. Okay? And when I was in the rescue squad, I had no idea at the time how much of a ministry that was. But not only did I pick up people, work on people, but I also got a chance to minister to them. I ministered to a bunch of people back at the rescue squad. And, and uh, uh, in order for that to happen, you got to go through training. If you didn't go through training, you wouldn't be doing it. That's right. And so, again, whatever you feel like if God's calling you to do something, you better prepare in that area. So you can be the best you can be. Whatever you do, when word or deed, give it everything you got. Because that's, that's then God can really use you. You know, I, I wanted Coach K to call me, you know, uh, the other night when he was losing. Because I looked over at Linda and I said, Linda, they have figured out his 4-1 zone. They're busting him. She said, what's a 4-1 zone? And so I stopped the TV. I used to be a basketball coach. I stopped the TV. And I, and I said, see right here? She said, yes, it's a 4-1 zone. I said, it's working for him right now. I said, but a 2-1-2 is better. And she said, what's 2-1-2? And I explained a 2-1-2. And I said, obviously, Coach K's been doing this a lot longer than I have. I don't have any national championships. I don't have any of these games. I said, but I can see right now they're busting that zone. And she said, what do you think you should do? I said, well, I think you should call me. <laughs> and she said, she said, well, you keep waiting for the phone to ring, okay? <laughs> oh, that was funny. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a whole crop of cousins in Kansas because that's where my mother is from. Uh -huh. Well, they have one happy week. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. All I've heard is rock, chalk, great jayhawk. <laughs> yeah, I call them chicken hawks, but the chicken hawks won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was but it was close. I think if, if Duke was playing like they were tired, if they if they'd give it if they had all their pistons firing, they would have stomped them. But they didn't have. But ifs if bullfrogs had pockets, they would yeah. carry they carry water guns. So they could shoot crocodiles between the eyes. <laughs> if bullfrogs had wings, they wouldn't bump their hiney every time they hop. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a big word. Biggest word in English. Language. That's right. right. Anybody got any more questions, answers, opinions? Now, but comes in close to if. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. It sure does. <laughs> All right, then let's, let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you for these awesome people. Lord, I know, God, they're hungry for you. Lord, they're hungry for your word. Touch them, lift them up, strengthen them, use them, anoint them. And, Father, just, just bless them abundantly, Lord. Help them to see their purpose so that they can reach the goals they need to fulfill that purpose. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, touch Bethany right now. Lord, touch Barbara and her family. Lord, Lord touch them all, Lord, in this place that has having burdens, Lord. We're believing for you to do something special. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.